So next we'll have Cheryl talk about the Horizon 7.53 upgrade. Okay, sorry. If you're wondering why I'm announcing each area is they're going to be splitting up the videos a little bit and this will help them to know when they split up the videos where they can have a break. So. Okay. So um, hopefully you guys recognize that we're right now we're running on Horizon 7.5.2 Service Pack 2. Um, <laughs> and, um, That's because they do ridiculously long numbers. Yes, so they have long numbers. They like to break things out. So if you go to the next slide, Donovan. Um, so this, because we're going from 7.5.2 to 7.5.3 instead of just doing a service pack upgrade, uh, which service packs are more kind of bug fixes, but since we're actually changing numbers, this is a bigger upgrade. Um, so it's going to take a little longer, and it includes not only bug fixes, but some functionality changes, including um, some brand new features. Um, it was released in September uh, for a couple reasons but mainly because uh, some of our colleagues were testing it out for us. We decided to wait a few months before we got in line to get this upgrade. We do not have a date yet for the upgrade, kind of Cersei Dynex does this line to get in the line process to get the upgrade. So we are in line to actually get a date, um, but they have to work through their line and then we'll get a date. So I will call them tomorrow and bug them about that. And uh, it will most likely happen before the next ILS Ops meeting, so that's why we're bringing it to here now. And uh, like our hor previous Horizon upgrades, our Service Pack 1 and 2, we will be doing this on a Saturday night. Um, Rick and I will be having lots of fun on Saturday, <laughs> doing lots of logins. Um, and then we'll test things out so that hopefully by the time everybody is up and working on Sunday, for those of the few libraries that are open on Sunday, everything's working, but should something not be working, then for the most of you, we will have had that, we'll have all of Sunday to have gotten that fixed. So, um, so yeah, we will do a Sunday evening upgrade. So if you go to the next slide. And just as a reminder financially, this is a service that we have to pay um, $3,000 for um, in order for it to occur on a Saturday. Cersei Dynex only does upgrades um, for free during the normal 9 to 5 mountain time, time day, daytime schedule, Monday through Friday. We do have that um, consulting platinum services right. that includes that, but it's still $3,000. Um, so yes, oh, I meant to take my phone number out of there. So I'm going to go on the website. So before you post it on the website, let me we'll, take we'll, my phone we'll number out. That up in the video. Um, so one of the things that's a bug fix that I know, I, I believe Alice had a ticket with me about this, but several other people have asked me about this, is I do my hold by email, um, but when you check it in, and it pops up, it says the requester will be notified by mail. Mm -hmm. And if you do SMS, it says SMS, but for email it says mail. And it's confusing because people want to know when they're putting things on their hold shelf. That bug is getting fixed in the update, so that should say by email instead of mail, if that makes sense. So, so that actually will reflect how the patron has chosen to get their notice. But it also prints the emails. It's still going to do that because that's kind of how we determine if they're getting their notice by email or not. And on our hold you. slip prints their email if it's if their email address is filled in. Our hold slips print their email. It should still put that on there. That's yeah. because ours don't look like that. Yeah. And see, this is part of the thing I'm going to get into in a little bit. But when we're told that there's an upgrade coming. We're given the release notes that are on the website that I've read through, but we don't actually know how the stuff is going to work until Saturday night when it's installed. So I, from what I've read in the release notes, I don't think the email will disappear off there. I don't see why it would. And if I could just add to that, Cheryl, um, release notes often are not exactly correct once you get to the real world. Um, but in our case, the problem is a little more pervasive because release notes often don't reflect a consortial 
installation of Horizon. And um, they often don't reflect a version of Horizon that's being distributed with Citrix. So historically, those have been the two areas where we've seen release notes most flagrantly um, deviate from what happens in real life. Because the release notes, they were accurate for a standalone library um, that had the client installed on every PC. So that's always part of these upgrades is the surprise that we see once the upgrade is actually done. And that's why we don't revise our videos and other training materials before the upgrade. We have to wait um, a week or so while we see what's really happening. And that kind of comes back to Cheryl's earlier point of letting other Source Dynamics customers test these things before we do. Donovan, um, if you want to go to the next slide, I'll talk about some of the enhancements. Um, so kind of along what Donovan was saying, you know, you have to kind of take some of these enhancements tongue-in-cheek because they all haven't been tested for a consortial environment over Citrix. So they're not always all going to work, and they're not all going to work out of the box for us. Um, I can tell you right now, um, let's see, if you go to the next slide where I have some more, um, borrower photos are one that I know right away are not going, it's not going to work immediately when we get it, that there is a third party product that we're going to have to use because of our Citrix environment to get those photos from your, wherever you're taking to the database so that they're stored in the borrower record. Um, another one would be the email checkout receipts. I know, I'm, I'm not even 100% certain those are going to work in our environment because of how Horizon handles email. Um, Horizon only email, Horizon does not email um, at SMTPS, so it does not do secure email. And Gmail only accepts SMTPS, so we have a big workaround so that our email notices can go out. But that workaround might not work for the checkout receipt. So that's kind of along what Donovan was saying, that these all look great and shiny, and I do hope they all work. But <laughs> a lot of them are going to take some work to get to work. Um, and some of the things like the global maximum number of checkouts, that's going to be stuff that's going to require conversations among people because we're in a consortium. And it's not just, hey, let's pick a number and hope that's OK. We, <laughs> we actually have to talk about some of this. Um, but if you back up one slide, Donovan, I will tell you, I've, I've heard nothing but good things about the scroll wheel list navigation. <laughs> <laughs> so that great 1992 technology, we're finally catching up. Um, you have to have them all through the scroll wheel, though. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the, uh, it, for those of you who don't know, when you're in Horizon and say you do a title search, and you get like a Nora Roberts, right, and she's got 500 titles, you have to hit the resume button, and the scroll wheel mouse doesn't work, it should now work. So, and I say should, but I think it's, this one sounds like it's working from everything I've heard. Um, let's see, uh, yeah, cancellation of trap at hold at check-in, that should be useful. If you go back one more slide, Donovan, you would also have the option there to cancel the hold instead of just hitting OK and putting it on the whole shelf. So something people have asked for. Um, and if you go forward again, even, sorry, um, I'm excited, and Becky is very excited about the bottom two. <laughs> so, and your cataloggers will be excited about the, bot the second from the bottom, um, hopefully. So we don't have to actually type in those terms. Um, you and refresh for the non-cataloger in me. What are the 336, well, 337 and 338? Right? I kind of misspoke because actually Markive is putting those in for us unless you're doing original. Um, so the, that's the content, media, and character type, the RDA field. So that's the um, okay. book, volume, unmediated, or audio. And it, it's a long string of text. That's, so now they're going to be fixed fields where you hit F12 and you can choose from the list, so, which is you know always better than free typing. So, all right, if you go forward, I think um, display of email address and checkout window, I would assume that would work right away, but again, we don't know. Um, and there are a few other things that are brand new features that I didn't put on here because they're kind of complicated and technical, like there's some 
changes to NSIP, so that kind of stuff. So if you just go forward one more, I think we're at, oh, so yeah, this is kind of what we talked about and I mentioned already, borrow for, you know, photos only third party and check out receipts may not work via, via our relay. Um, we'll be able to test what we can, but some of it, most of it, we won't really be able to test until we're live. So if you go forward again, Donovan. So this is how we're going to try and communicate. As soon as we know the date, we will do some kind of post or update about when the downtime will be. Um, again, it'll be on a Saturday night after hours. And then um, once we are installed, within a few days after the install, we'll sort of send some emails and posts out about the features that are up and working that have changed. But then we may need several months to several weeks kind of configuring some of the new or more complicated features. Um, and as those are working, we'll send out information about them. So that's it. Now you've got a Citrix upgrade with a new Citrix client and a new, new version here. Citrix is notoriously poor on the printing situation. Do you intend to have everybody at a certain level of Citrix when you deploy this? Or are you going to play Citrix after this? We would be doing Citrix after this. Okay, so you shouldn't have that issue of two sets of Citrix, one works, one doesn't. No. And, mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And, and Citrix printing has gotten a lot better than when we first moved in that direction you know, 15 years broke. ago. It's, it's a lot better now than it used to be, and, and it should be even better with the new version. But we're not going to be getting that new version out on library PCs until summer at the absolute earliest in fall. Yeah, this will be before the next ILS app meeting. So I'm hoping like middle of February. So so this is Levon. So is one of the enhancements going to be when you're checking in an item that has multiple pieces and it says check to make sure this DVD has two DVDs? Right now, if it doesn't, too bad. You've already checked it in. You don't you have, have, you have to check the we have check-in notes, sure, but once you check it in and it pops up and says check for two DVDs. So you look at it and it has one DVD. At that point, it's already checked in. You can't go back. Yeah, there's, that's not included in this upgrade, what you're asking so, for. So, yeah, you, only, you have to, check in. yeah, you can't, can't you're, you're stuck. Yeah, because you've already actually checked it in at yeah. that point. So, yeah. yeah. The database transaction has already happened. Yeah. So if you want to know who we used to be current well, or previous borrower is, you can write to the help desk yeah. and we can tell you. No, you have to, you can do that. I yeah. mean, that's what we do now, and then we check it back out to the person. But in the um, system we had before, oh, you could you could cancel the check in. I mean, if you were checking it in and then you noticed twelve years. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> we have that long. We migrated in September of 2002. Oh, shut 2003. up. I had to have to spend that long. 2003. <laughs> I, I did like that feature. <laughs> Apparently a lot, because I've never forgotten it. Well, I mean, part of that would be the different ways the different databases are designed, because once you check it in, it's already checked in. It, you can't undo it. I mean, it's, it's something we could submit as an enhancement request. It would be a nice one to say cancel. I don't know how feasible it is for them. If you can cancel the whole, well, that's what I was thinking. If you can cancel the whole, yeah, it's already been submitted to the database. That's just another piece of programming there. Why can't they cancel the check-in? You can cancel the whole, but the hold is there's still things that have to happen to the whole. Once you've checked it in, it's checked in. So, but it's. 13 years. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's why retirements are good. Yeah. You know, memory feature. But it was a good, it was a good feature. Just because it was old. <laughs> we, we can check into making that an enhancement request. Um, whether they can do anything with it, I don't know. But we can always ask. Anybody else have any other questions? The email checkout receipts, is that a prompt or is that a button? In your location table. So it'll be set by location, whether you want the email checkout receipts. And then I think it's in the borrower record, if I remember correctly, I'm reading the notes. Yeah, I thought I'm reading the notes.
this might seem like a stupid question, but what what are the patron photos? Who uses those? Schools. Like schools. I mean, I'm I figured that, but because they have pictures on their school IDs, right? It's in the viral record, Jane. But does anybody else use pictures? There of are public libraries that are yeah. standalone public libraries that have found them very useful. Do you? Yeah, I know a few public libraries in the region express interest, and we've mentioned this in the past. Yeah, I mean, I was just curious. I you know, we were in a photo we were, booth. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. More like a webcam, yeah. you know, like yeah, a little webcam. Your monitor. Okay, so I'm 13 years back. <laughs> <laughs> so in Pine Island, we had, you know, small, right? Like nobody brought their library card in, which was fine for Jean because she knew everybody. But I didn't know people <laughs> when I started there. So if I could look at their photo instead of harassing them for the library card that they lost when they were 12, 15 years ago, that may have, you know, not have made so many patrons upset. <laughs> so what do you do about hairstyle changes and <laughs> aging? And aging? <laughs> We've had some issues with uh, kind of our, our tween girls trying to say who they're not who they are and stuff, or get away with because they've lost their card and they want to use somebody else's card. So. For that age group, I could see the pictures being very helpful. Which must be, is also the same kind of thing that's at the school as to, and I know Diane Plager used to, and, and not to be um, um, ethnically biased here, but she would say, you know, she's got a lot of Mohammeds in her class, and to know which one was standing in front of her. Well, we require a piece of ID if they don't have their card, so, uh, yeah. Perhaps it's, most of the students don't have their ID to them. And so we're just typing in numbers. And yeah. Saying, What's your last name? So this would be an alternative way of handling yeah. that situation. Yeah. I mean, if you were interested in, if you're in a big library, I could see that would be very beneficial. Or if you were new to a small library yeah. and weren't related to everybody in town. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody brings their cards that can you. So yeah. you can use the photos that we take of the students with the ID somehow. Is I don't know. Yeah. That I, I can't answer can yet. Yeah. In a they don't know what the way. format requirements will be or anything like that. But that yeah. certainly, Pat, has been what has that we've heard discussed that, you know, you're looking at and using for those of you who already have photo right. data that that's ideal. And we have it in Skyward. I don't know if Skyward formatting would be similar or not. Yeah. Yeah. James asked if the email checkout receipts for the prompter, it looks like it's probably a setting from what it's saying in the borrower record, probably next to where you put the email address in, whether, you know, email checkout receipts. And then there is a location setting that I was confusing it with um, for whether or not you want the email address to display in the checkout window that's location based, so not borrower based. But even if there is an email checkout receipt, then there's going to need to be a prompt. Otherwise, you're going to not know if they have email without manually going and edit the record. So I would imagine that it would be somewhere, but I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm hoping they thought this out in the workflow. <laughs> so I just didn't know if you know it's one of those things where it's implemented and then. So you can turn these features oh, off. Actually, now that I'm thinking about this, what I'm thinking about um, is I did have a conversation with a colleague up in Arrowhead, and she said, from what I'm remembering, that it is there is essentially a prompt that you have to check print receipt or email receipt when you hit like F11 is what I'm recalling her okay, saying. That's, yeah, but, that's why. So you can't do both. They would might be able to. I don't know yet. So. But it will I can be. Answer, but. But you can actually turn this feature off yes. totally, globally. Um, that I'm not sure. And then test it and then decide to roll it out or not. That's I'm, not I'm not entirely sure on that. Okay, because then I mean, you can turn it if you can't, and then that's a somewhat instructional procedural change for individual libraries. Mm -hmm. They're going to need to, they're going to, basically they're going to complain. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you're, <laughs> Sure, they probably will, but I also, there's, I mean, we do this on Saturday night, we try to test things out on Sunday, but there's only so much we're going to get to in a day, so I can't, I can't answer that until we're actually, until that Saturday night, but you'll be around, so 